Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ice Project. Today is just going to be sort of a sit down vibe. Uh, really inspired by a podcast at the moment called Token CEO Erica Nardini. She runs a, uh, she's the CEO of Barstool Sports. And if you followed our journey, you know we love Barstool Sports and big inspiration of everything that we do. So I've got a couple notes down here, a couple questions from you guys last week. Um, so I'll sort of just run through kind of like an inside YKTR vibe without the sort of back and forth interaction. But we'll go from there. One of the questions last week was. Um, what's the biggest issue you're having of YKTR at the moment? So for us right now, really tough, not tough time, but we're trying to get through it in terms of supply chain. So the biggest issue we're having right now is uh, everything's getting delayed back. And we're not the only brand. Every other brand is going through this as well. And an example of this is sort of payment terms. So say like our stuff's getting leaving china it usually used to take about four weeks to get here or three weeks and we could have it in store and selling by that date currently right now that's taking about seven eight weeks so if you think of payment terms um, if a boat starts here and it takes eight weeks but then you have to pay your invoice on the 30th day um, you can see where the congestion starts to really line up so that's the issues that we're having right now obviously <coughs> costs a lot more to make winter clothes we're trying to scale we're trying to buy more clothes so um, it's really interesting time because we're in that really big scale phase. So say if you turn over like a million dollars and you want to turn over $5 million, to turn over $5 million, you have to have $5 million of product to sell. In theory, you probably have to have about 6 or $7 million and have that 70% sell through as well. So that's where we're at with YKTR. Some of the biggest issues that we're having is more so about supply chain more, more than anything. Um, YKTR Sports, I really like where we are in, in this little space right now. Very consistent with the shows. I think Scope's doing a really great job with all his content and his preparation. Um, and it doesn't feel frantic. It doesn't feel erratic like we used to feel. We used to just sort of launch shows willy-nilly. Like, all right, cool, let's just start this. Let's just start that. I really like the flow of it. Obviously, with Jackson away at the moment, he'll come back and sort of move into a producer role and he sort of really help Luki out. I think Luki's probably got a bit too much workload on him at the moment and a lot of it's um, stuff that we can offload. So... Luke is probably at the point now where he can start to delegate, but then um, it also takes away from his skill set. So his skill set and the best thing about Luke, the thing I love about Luke is he likes, makes my life a lot easier. As a, And one of the sayings in business is um, staff, they can either make your life twice as hard or, or twice as easy. And Luke sort of fits really into that category. So once Jackson comes back, he won't host a sports show. I kind of like the dynamic of me and Scope in there, but he will live cut the show and then he will have a mic there as well. So a lot of the shows that were inspired by basketball sports, the Pat McAfee show, they kind of have different personalities and you can you can grow those personalities through. He doesn't always have to be hosting, but he can be sitting behind a camera, live chopping, and then we can shoot to him for questions as well. So um, that way we're thinking we don't need four or five people in here cutting out one podcast. We can have Scope, myself, and uh, Jackson doing it, and then he'll go up, live chop it, Oh, he'll live chop it and then roll into the post edit. So we're not we're not sort of wasting time. Uh, Caleb's we have pulled away from doing life at YKTR every single week, and it's not going away. It's definitely still going to be there, but we're just going to really focus on <clears throat> making better quality content and dropping less, like dropping um, not as often. So. Looking forward to that. A couple of things we've got exciting coming up, potentially going down to Melbourne to shoot some content. Obviously, Hectic Cheese is a part of everything that we're doing right now. A little bit hard when he's down there in Melbourne in terms of content. Everyone's like, where's the cheese content? We live in different states and um, he's got his football season. I've got businesses to run. So we just want to see where that alignment is. He's got 100 games coming up too. So we want to do something smart and strategic and something built around e-commerce and branding and community i haven't quite figured what that out what that is right now but he's roughly got about 10 games till he hits 100 games as well so really looking forward to that just rolling off that kind of really liking like in the athlete entrepreneur space at the moment um, someone like nathan cleary who's lined up with the thai bam bam to avasa launching a bear like i know that's not super original but i, I like the alignment of that like the west bear Really interesting. I uh, shot an ad just a couple of days ago with Shannon Noll. That's really cool. Obviously, Josh Adokar launched a clothing brand called Let's Trot, aligned with Shoe Grab, I think is what they've called, is what, is what they've called it. Uh, I think there's Melbourne Boys, Sandor, 
Kenny Bromwich, Ryan Pappenhaus and Jerome Hughes are really smart guys. They launched a DAO project, which is a decentralized autonomous organization in the crypto space, which just is like kind of like a big kitty and doing really cool things. Bought a board ape yacht, um, board ape, bought a few other things as well. So I'll get definitely get Sandal in here pretty soon and talk about those experiences. But really like in the space right now where athletes are trying to maximize the potential or leverage that they have right now to really move towards building something that's sustainable. And what I mean by sustainable is hard thing about rugby league is you're under pressure a lot. Um, you also get paid very good money, but you're also taxed at the highest rate. So as soon as you earn over 180K, like everyone else within this country, you get taxed at 45%. Half your money gets chopped in half. A lot of players just go and try and buy um, property, which is a great way to do it. But I think a lot of players are starting to realize now that life after football is a little bit different. And what you want to do, you want to have equity within the business. So players are getting smarter. They're wising up. Uh, I have a lot more DMs with players right now than I would have had two, three years ago. Not only about clothing brands, but about brand deals, about everything like that as well. Um, some other guys that at the forefront of that, probably 257 Collective. Hard thing about that is they've kind of split up at the moment. So Connor is at Roosters, KP. He's at the Knights as well, plus going through contract negotiations. So it's a little bit messy. And that's the frantic part about football and you need to be focusing on football. But um, yeah, I really like the space right now. And I think we've been a big part of that as well. So I think a lot of players look to us and I'm not saying we're the sole reason for it, but I definitely think we'll be a small part of that motivation as well. So excited for that. Uh, YKTR Sports, we're going up to Magic Round. We'll be doing club appearances, which is going to be fun. The boys went up last week and last time and had a great time. And uh, I really want to build content that's built around community at the moment. So that's going to be fun, potentially down in Melbourne for Magic Round for Union, which give us, gives us a touch point with New Zealand. I'm from New Zealand, so um, I think growing that space down there has always been super something super exciting to me. And why that is, is there was a guy from my hometown who started a brand called Huffer, and Huffer's gone on to be around for 25, 30 years right now, um, done really, really cool things. So, And I always remember going, if that guy could start a clothing brand, potentially I can start something. And I didn't know I was going to roll into clothing. I'd done an entrepreneurial class when I was um, form five or year 11 or 12 or whatever it is. And that was kind of like the key case study that we focused on. So I always just felt like if that guy can do it, I could do it as well. We're from that space. Um, currently, as you guys can see, the change in podcast studio when set up. One thing that I'm on big on is always trying to improve your environment and, and get moving to better places and, and create an environment that you want to come to work every single day and, and allow for growth. So right now, sitting in the content studio, which used to be our old office, really, really love it. Um, very diverse, big open space, a little bit messy at the moment, but that'll change. And if you see my stories yesterday, currently getting a podcast studio getting built out. It's going to cost like 40, 50K to build, but I think it's going to be worth it. And what the guys said, it goes, potentially you guys could have the best podcast studio in Sydney. So when you start thinking business wise, obviously it's something that we can use for free. Um, we could start to rent out the space as well because a lot of people are trying to start podcasts, but they can't. Um, afford the equipment or like it just feels a lot more professional when you're trying to invite someone of importance or someone with followers or if they come in and you've got great equipment great quality audio I think it just makes a really really big difference and really set yourself up for growth as well so um, once this podcast studio was set up I'll probably start looking for extra talent for us to bring on um, if you look at someone like Hello Sports, Hello Sports are doing great right now and they, they went underneath the Bloke in the Bar banner for a year. I actually didn't realise they've been podcasting for five years before that, but sort of just last year they've really blown up. So it's been really interesting to watch that that's that grow. So hopefully we can be those types of guys where we see potential in up and coming brands or up and coming podcasters and not always try and sign them all the time. Like I, I think that's cool, but sometimes just give them a platform for them to grow and, and be themselves. And much like our bloke in the bar done it for Hello Sports and Rugby Luguru is there at the moment. So I just really want to build a strong infrastructure for people to come through and, and blow up. And uh, I've got a friend, Shawnee Stowers. She grew up in my hometown, NRLW. We had a chat with her too. So she wants to start a podcast and potentially we could provide the platform for her to do something along those lines. And that's always been the goal. Um, but you can, it's starting to feel like a little bit more real now. Like like I said, I'm sitting in our podcast studio now. Heaps of really cool equipment. 
um, everything you need to grow. And the great thing about podcasts is you don't really need too much, honestly. Like if you look at Rogan, he's got one guy that cuts up his content and and um, just produces really good audio content for people to listen to and watch. So it's exciting. We'll get back into the Ice Project pretty soon. Um, got some guests lined up already, but I'm just kind of focusing on trying to get this place in, in a good place where it um, allows time for me to sort of break away and, and do the stuff that I want to do. Podcast is one of my favorite things to do. So it's always fun talking to people that are 10 times smarter than you. Uh, what else is happening? Supply chain issues. Oh, yeah, we've got a couple of new shows that we're working on. Obviously, we've kind of loosely linked them. Um, our, we're just trying to find that point of difference, trying to redefine, trying to look at our our demographic or or look at the market space and go, are we are we adding to the noise or are we trying to create our own path as well? So um, we were almost going to start doing a re- re- review show about football, but then we're kind of just falling into the same categories as everyone now. So we're going to try and start creating a couple new extra shows um, that – which have always been our goal. Like obviously COVID threw us into big podcasting space where we couldn't really go out and travel and meet players and interview them and stuff like that and create shows like that. So um, I'm really looking forward to these couple shows that we've got lined up. But then we're trying to build them with structure. So my normal style of content is record, post. All right, what's the next piece of content? I'm a little bit more patient now. We're sort of taking a step back. We'll, We'll get a group of shows together. Um, we'll try and find sponsors for them. We'll try and attach commerce to them, whether it is clothing. I think that's the most basic one for us as well. Um, a lot of times when you go to Dreamworld, you want to get the T-shirt as well. Or you go to Disneyland, like I got the T-shirt as well. It's attaching commerce to the bottom of the content funnel as well. So really cool shows. Uh, Scope's got one coming up with some pretty big, big guests. It is built around golf, uh, one of his little passions at the moment. So I think there's a little white space there where... I'm not big on golf, but I've been looking around that content. I don't think anyone's really nailing that content. And a lot of footballers love to play golf in their spare time because they do get a lot of spare time. So excited for that. What else is happening? Oh, workflow is going good for the boys. Um, so I think Simi super focused. Scope's in his little flow now as well. Caleb um, he doesn't have the pressure of life at YKTR, but to be fair, he's probably doing more work now. Um, I'm probably putting like a little bit more pressure on him to grow um, Caleb's like a great kid and his heart's in the right place he just kind of needs direction and, and motivation sometimes and um, he's just someone the type of employee and because he's 18 like you just have to be in constant communication with him and, and, and helping him grow as well and he responds to that stuff really well it's kind of when I sort of leave him on his own and let him do his own thing he starts to get like a little bit lost and sometimes rocks up late to work as well so uh, that's good really looking forward to a few of the key changes uh, one of the big ones like Everyone sort of knows like Luke is like my right hand guy, but it's sort of um, because he'd be classed as like the number two here. Everyone it doesn't mean he has to move into a management position where he's looking after people. And I, I kind of wanted him to do that just to take some pressure off me, um, but it took away from his workflow. So coming on Monday, I could see he was a little bit under pressure, and I sort of said to him like, "Hey, I'll, I'll get all the boy stuff running back through me." Um, and I've just got a touch print on everything that we're doing with YKTR right now. And I just want him to be light and free and creative and, and doing stuff that makes our business grow. Dealing with people, obviously we've got big personalities in here. I'm a big personality. Chico's a big personality. Simi's probably the biggest one. And then Scope as well. Like Scope calls himself the Scope. So there's some big personalities. And if you're creative, sometimes dealing with people is something that's very draining. And I, I don't want Lukey to be weighed down with that responsibility anymore. So, um, yeah, but I'm right back into everything as well, back into the Doozy Club, um, back into the designs. I kind of wanted to step away from content, but that's just look like that's not going to happen. So I'm going to be doubling down on content without trying to saturate it, trying to just bring points of difference to the market. Um, what else we got? YKTR Sports. I'm back doing brand deals as well. kind of hope Simi would really grab that opportunity, but he kind of hasn't. Um, He's got this new idea that he wants to start, which I'm not too big on because it's just kind of the same conversations I've had with him all the time. So um, so I'll go back and try and close some deals as well. And yeah, just a day in and day out of actually running the business. It's like fun. Don't like It is hard, trust me, but I love it. I love it. Um, really long days at the moment, working weekends at the moment, but it's fun for me. I love the shit, so it's cool. Just that. I just really need to keep my head down and focused and really help this business grow to this next little phase. And 
you know you got a good business when you don't have to be there every single day. So realistically, if I took two months off or three months off, um, this business would decline. And that lets me know that I haven't built a, a solid business with great systems in place that will sustain growth. And um, I think my next couple hires are going to be so important. Like I've, loose, I've, I've told the boys I'm not hiring friends anymore. I'm not hiring people that we know. I just want to hire some ninjas that are really, really to grow. So I don't know when that is. Whenever I do content like this, I get a bunch of DMs saying I'll work for you. But my next couple of hires are going to be really important. And I'm, I'm not opposed to stepping away from like the CEO manager role of this. If I'm not the best person to grow this company, I'd happily let someone else take over it. That's where my mindset's at the moment. Um, all this, much like Logie, all this sort of day to day running starts to drain me and where maybe I'm better being light and creative and focusing on one area of the business and letting someone else take care of that. But I still think that's a year and a half off or two years off, realistically. Um, I'm back very much into designing as well in terms of clothing. You're going to see a level up in products. I know what I'm doing now. I know how budgets work. I'm doing all the budgets and stuff like that as well. So, uh, and yeah, trying to make content for you guys as well. Bring the ice project back, help the boys grow. And yeah, it's fun. Um, but yeah, this is a new style of form of content we're going to be doing. Probably roll into a Q&A as well from you guys as well. But I just want to sort of do like an inside YKTL without the back and forth. Just kind of like a boardroom style. Where my thoughts at? I know this content ain't for everyone. It's not like the most fun. But I really enjoy making this content and listening to this style of content because it helps um, business people grow. And my favorite thing to do is business right now. So yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Please like, please comment, please subscribe. And we'll see you next week.